I'd now like to discuss with you the concept of energy spectral density, which we've already seen, especially in our definition of the uh, bandwidth and other, and in Parsifal's theorem from uh, linear time invariant systems. And I'd like to talk about energy spectral density versus power spectral density, because we see both of them. And it's a little bit of a fine point, the difference between them, uh, mathematical uh, definition. And uh, I thought I'd bring it to your attention now just to make a um, make it clear, and also the importance of the autocorrelation function and how this function is related to those spectral densities. Uh, so if we go to the uh, reference book, Sklar, uh, these concepts are covered very early in the uh, book in sections 1.2, 1.3, and 1.4. Uh, first, let's start with this idea of an energy function. And by definition, an energy function was a function which was in L2. And we saw that any function in L2, we could define the energy spectral density based on the Fourier transform of this uh, time uh, function. From there, there are a couple concepts I'd like to expand this uh, uh, discussion to. And the first is the idea of an energy per bit. Uh, so we can talk about the energy per bit as being the energy within a finite interval, uh, the finite interval being the bit time. And so if the time of a bit is Tb, then we would define this energy per bit to be the um, function energy uh, integrated over that bit interval. And another concept we can introduce is the autocorrelation function. If I take this signal, f of t, how similar is the shape to itself? And we can find uh, a quali quantitative value, which is the autocorrelation function. So tau is the lag between a function, a signal, and itself. So if it's a little bit off by a lag, some tau, how, how similar is the shape to itself? And how far does that lag have to grow in order for this shape to be uh, uncorrelated with itself? So this is an important concept, the autocorrelation function. We typically use this value tau to be the lag between uh, the two uh, shapes. So energy spectral density, which we have e of w here, e of omega here, which we define from the Fourier relationship. And now I come up with this new definition, which is the autocorrelation. What we're going to see is that these are uh, very closely related uh, quantities. So the autocorrelation function for energy signals in particular, well, I just gave you the definition. Uh, this is the definition of that uh, autocorrelation function. And just based on the mathematics of this definition, there are some simple properties that we can see about an autocorrelation function. First is that it's symmetrical around zero, around zero delay. Uh, so that comes, you know, falls right out of the definition, replace tau by minus tau. Uh, the next is that the maximum always occurs at tau equal to zero. So for all tau which are uh, non-zero, the um, autocorrelation is smaller. Uh, we want to allow the possibility for uh, the function to be um, complex, so we'll again use the module here. And finally, I said that there is an important relation between the autocorrelation function and the um, energy spectral density, and that is that they form uh, a Fourier transform pair. So the double arrow here means one is the Fourier transform of the other. And so this is the E omega I was talking about earlier, the energy spectral density. And I can get that just by this simple uh, relationship. One last property of the autocorrelation function is that the value at the origin is equal to the energy of the signal. So the autocorrelation value, this maximum value that, that occurs at time equals 0. Well, if I just put tau equal to 0 here, I get the definition of uh, a um, the energy of the signal. And again, if I wanted to uh, allow for a complex signal, then I would say the module squared. So this is um, a little uh, demonstration, mathematical demonstration of the fact that if I start from the autocorrelation function and I ask what is the, uh, the Fourier transform 
Now, what is the Fourier transform of this autocorrelation function? Then I get this uh, final uh, result that it's equal to the energy spectral density. And the demonstration is quite straightforward. So we're looking for the Fourier transform of this integral of the signal correlated with uh, itself at a lag of tau. So we integrate over t from minus infinity to infinity, and then it remains a function of the lag tau. So when we take the Fourier transform, of course, we take this function of tau, and we multiply by e to the minus j omega tau and integrate over tau. And that is the definition of the Fourier transform. The next is simply to change the order of integration. Integration over tau, the integration of t, change the order. And now I'm going to manipulate the integration over tau because I have uh, this variable t plus tau. And so I'm going to uh, multiply and divide by e to the g, uh, j omega t. And I'm going to move one of them out here, outside of the first integral. Inside of this integral, which is an integral over tau, what I'm going to do is change variables so that t plus tau becomes z. Of course, it's an integral from minus infinity to infinity over tau, so the displacement by t is irrelevant. It's also minus infinity to infinity. And so now I have f of z to the minus g omega z dz. And now I can see there's no dependence on time that remains here so that I can actually turn this double integral into the product of two integrals. And each one of those integrals is a uh, Fourier transform, one the uh, complex conjugate of the other. And so uh, that brings us to the final result, that this is indeed the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation function is the energy spectral density. So this was uh, one of the major properties of the autocorrelation function is that it is a Fourier transform pair with the ESD. Now, I said that we, all, we talked about energy spectral density, but we often hear the term power spectral density. Why the two? What's the difference between the two? Well, I started by saying that I was looking at an energy signal, which is a signal which is in L2, so where the uh, integral of uh, the module squared of the uh, signal is finite. And even if I let this time interval go to infinity, this energy is finite. So the energy is finite below infinity. What does that have to do with the power? Well, what is the definition of the power? The power of a signal is, by definition, the average over a given interval, and then I let that, the um, average energy over a given interval, and then I let that interval go to infinity. So if this uh, integral by itself is finite as I go to infinity, that means that for an energy signal, the power is zero. Because in order, uh, if this goes to zero, then certainly if I divide by t, t goes to infinity, it's going to go, uh, sorry, if this one is finite, then the one over t, as I let t go to infinity, will force the power to zero. So an, what's the difference between an energy signal and a power signal? An energy signal has uh, zero uh, instantaneous uh, power. Um, so if the power is finite, what does that mean about the energy? Well, if the power is finite, that means that, uh, fi by finite I mean it's non-zero. Okay? It's a below infinity but above zero. That means that the energy must be infinite. If I'm going to keep the power from being zero, that means that the energy must be infinite. So we call that a power signal. So we have energy signals and power signals. And what do these mean? Can I like, um, certainly infinite energy seems like it's not really possible. So some physical signals would seem to be energy signals. But what's a power signal? Well, a power signal is an important construct, mathematical construct, especially in um, communication systems. So in particular, all realistic signals are energy signals, but all periodic signals, periodic means that they started at minus, you know, the beginning of the universe till the end of the universe goes on forever. These are power signals. And of course, I, I like periodic signals. I like to use them. I like cosines and sines and modulating uh, information. And so power signals are something we come across in our analysis. And we'll also see that random signals are power signals. But I won't be talking about during this lecture, but in another one, I'll be talking about random signals. So let's start with periodic signals. Periodic signals can always be represented in a Fourier series, as we know from our Fourier analysis. So if I have a 
periodic signal, that means that it can be written as a sum of uh, complex exponentials and the uh, CN here are complex coefficients in the Fourier series. So this is the Fourier series representation. And if x of t is a real function, then these could be written as a sum of cosines and sines. Uh, the important things is the Fourier coefficients are c of n. And if I were to look now at the uh, Fourier transform pair for a Fourier series, what is the Fourier transform of a periodic signal? Well, in this case, the um, uh, power spectral density uh, would be to take the coefficient squared or module squared of the coefficients and they would be represented to, uh, as the a weight of a delta function centered on that uh, harmonic of the um, fundamental period uh, frequency of this periodic signal. So a periodic signal we know has a discrete Fourier transform and the power spectral density, we call it power because now these are power signals. Uh, power spectral density will have height, which is determined by the uh, module squared of the uh, coefficients of the Fourier series representation. So just as we defined an autocorrelation function for an energy signal, we can also define a autocorrelation function for a periodic, or excuse me, for a um, power signal, in particular for a periodic signal. And in that case, we're looking at the correlation over one period. So instead of going from minus infinity to infinity, we look at one period of the uh, periodic signal, and we average over the length of that uh, period. And uh, properties for this signal are very much the same as what we saw for the energy spectral density. So uh, falls right out once again from this mathematical definition that it is indeed symmetric around uh, tau equals zero. The maximum occurs at zero lag and the um, power spectral density forms the Fourier transform pair uh, between the autocorrelation function and the power spectral density. And of course once again by uh, definition the value at the origin the, of the uh, autocorrelation function is the average uh, power of the signal. Uh, so the last thing I said was that all random signals are power signals, but in order to uh, finish that discussion, I'm going to have to give a little bit more background on random signals.